you saw here uh, when I was actually going through and doing the credential harvesting. If you turn this on, and we'll go ahead and do that, it'll actually allow you to send emails after the site has been created. So you create your malicious site, you clone everything, you turn your web attack email on, um, it'll then prompt you to, um, you know, if you want to send an email out to a bunch of people. And I can do a mass email, single email addresses, uh, whatever you want to. I won't get into the self sign Apple yet. And here's the auto detect. This is where you turn that off if you didn't want it to automatically detect your IP address. Just turn it off, and then you can enter in whatever you want to. So let's do that same exact detect we just did before. So we're going to do the web attack, site cloner, credential harvester, we're going to clone Gmail. Someday. And if you see here, we're not prompted for passwords. So we can send a single email address or a mass email. A uh, specific format is, you know, just username by email address by email address. So email address, enter, email address, enter, email address, enter, et cetera. So we'll send it to my email address. And here you can either integrate, it integrates into Gmail. So if you have a Gmail account, it'll send it from there. Or if you want to use your open your own relay server, so for example, you have an SMTP server, it provides both credentials or anonymous. Um, if you had send mail here, it automatically prompted for a send mail um, email as well. But we'll just go ahead and use email. We'll use my email address. So it will go through and send the email for us. And if you go back to our email account here, so I'm definitely going to check this website out because it says, "Dude, you have to check it out." And then I'm, I'm that's where I get it. Okay. I'm not going to actually put my username password there. <laughs> but hey, I'm actually authenticated already, so it just redirects me back to Gmail because I'm only there. Cool. And on the back end, I get all of the credentials harvested. So, you know, whatever you can figure out a way to coax somebody into clicking your site is obviously a good thing. So that was new in for Moda uh, 5. Now, one attack I want to talk about is the Java Apple attack, and that's my that's probably my favorite one. And reason being is everybody traditionally on their Windows system, or Linux or OS X, has Java installed, right? I mean, Java's a pretty integral component of the internet. So with Java, there's this awesome non-vulnerability, as they call it, uh, where you can create a Java applet, self-sign it to whatever you want to, and when a victim goes to browse that site, it's going to say, hey, Microsoft is trying to um, have you run this Java applet. Do you trust them? Well, of course we're going to trust Microsoft. <laughs> I would, right? Or Google. I mean, yeah. Or China. <laughs> So we're going to turn the self-signed Java Apple on. What that's going to do is, is, by default, the Java Apple will be signed by Microsoft. Sorry, Microsoft. Um, and then um, if you want to spoof it to somebody else, like Google or whomever, just turn this on, and you can specify it. I will turn the web config off, uh, the web attack off, as you get the idea. You know, if again, if you send emails to individuals, you can get them to click on it. So we'll do the website attack vector. We're going to clone a site again. And we're going to do the Java applet attack method. I lost my internet. Oh. So, what's your first name? So we just created our self-signed job app. We're going to clone Google.com. And here's where we're starting to uh, get into the payload selection. Now, what I've done with Set is I've incorporated pretty much every Metasploit attack you can possibly imagine into Set as well, the payload creation and everything else uh, to get around antivirus. And it's funny because when I presented at ShmooCon and I released this, they released like six signatures for my tool. So I obfuscated everything to hell. So everything that, that Set does is completely random and unique. And so it gets past all of them now. So just to make sure antivirus companies, good job. Yeah. 
So we're going to select uh, our default, which is going to be interpreter. And we're going to use the default. Now, uh, in new in version 705, I took calculator.exe, calc.exe. And what I found was, if you're if you're going to code cave or do that backdoor the dash 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 k or whatever, um, if you're using command um, type applications like ping or something that revolves around being inside a command prompt, what will happen is the way that MetaSwitch Meta injects its payload into it, that the user would get a pop up that looks like a blank command shell. Obviously, that would probably be a good indicator that something not good is happening. Um, I don't know, probably not. People would just be like, oh, I got to minimize that. I mean, I'm sure the website needed that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so what I did was I found that things that don't use console applications, like calc.exe, for example, is a specific GUI. Um, if you code cave those and you don't specify the dash k flag, nothing is ever presented to the user ever. So I don't want the executable to run properly, but I also don't want any type of console application. So what I did was I took calc.exe, I, I foobarred it a bit so that calc wouldn't load, and then whenever you generate a backdoor, it does that. Uh, currently, uh, none of the antivirus vendors are picking this up, so you pretty much have a 0 out of 42 clip, which is a good thing. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to hit enter. So we're going to use the default, but you can do multi encoder. Uh, multi encoder will, will you know, Shikata guy nade it, it'll alpha encode it, it'll Shikata guy nade it again, and do a bunch of other encodings to try to get around antivirus if you didn't want to do the binary. Um, you can also specify your own encoding if you want to, whatever you really want to do. Um, we can also enter the port here. Uh, so I'll just use the default, which is 4 or 3. Uh, but you can specify whatever port you want the actual payload listener to run, be running on. So it's encoded. Now, one thing about this attack is it's not only for Windows. It does work on Linux and it does work on OS X, so it's multi-platform. So based off of what you're browsing at, your user agent, it'll say, oh, hey, your your, your Linux, okay, I'm going to shoot you over this payload. Or, hey, your Mac, I'm going to shoot you over this payload. Or, hey, your Windows, I mean, I'm going to shoot you over a whole bunch of payloads. So we're not going to do those right now. By the way, if anybody has any questions, I'm going through this, feel free. So we've got our payload handler through Metasploit. Should look familiar, right? Um, one thing I did add is the it automatically does migrate. So when you go and exploit this, um, it will migrate to a different process. So if the user does close the browser, it's still okay. Got to make sure about that. So we'll go and browse to our website. Now, the first time you load this, it can be a little slow because um, it doesn't cache it the, the very first time. But afterwards, it's very fast. And it is a multi-thread HTTP server, so turn it on. Oh, that's quick. Okay. So we get this publisher of Microsoft, which I thought was for Google, but oh. Um, so we get this payload that says, hey, Microsoft wants you to publish this application, do you trust them? And of course we trust Microsoft, so we will run this. And so when we run it, everything's looking good, you know, we have Google. I was taking a little longer for some reason. Like I said, the first time you use this, it's a little bit slow. <coughs> Alright, sacrifice Elliot. Huh? Sacrifice Elliot. So 